and welcome back to channel 12. I'm here with Sherbert, I mean Herbert Hoover. So, Herbert, what are your, some of your biggest achievements? Well, when Germany declared war on France and the American Consul General asked for my help in getting stranded tourists home in six weeks, only six weeks, my committee helped over 120,000 Americans return to the United States of America. Next, I turn to a far more difficult task to Very interesting, Herbert. Well, what happened after the United States entered war? After the United States entered the war, President Wilson appointed me as head of the Food Administration. Heck yes. And I also kept my allies fed too. What an achievement. Is this how you do it? Anyway, what did you do as a member of the Supreme Court? After capably serving as Secretary of Commerce under Presidents Harding and cool, cool, Coolidge, he's the cool guy, I became the Republican presidential nominee of 1920, oh, in, in 1928. I said then, we in America today are nearer to the final triumph of, over poverty than ever before of the history of any land. My election seemed to ensure prosperity, yet within months, the stock market crashed and the nation spiraled downward into depression. Such achievements. Well, what did you do after the Kool-Aid crash? Oh, oh. After the crash, I then announced that while I would keep the federal budget balanced, I would cut taxes and expand public work spendings. This was a very, very lucky pre pleasure. No, it was my pleasure. I hope I'm getting paid for this. Okay, <laughs> thank you for joining us today. We're signing off and see you later. The Bonus Army. In 1924, a grateful Congress voted to give a bonus to World War I veteran at $1.25. For each day I served overseas, $1 was for each day served in the States. The catch of that payment would not be made until 1945. However, by 1932, the nation had slipped into the dark days of the Depression and the unemployed veterans wanted their money immediately. In May of that year, some 15,000 veterans were unemployed and distribute, descended on Washington, D.C. To, to demand immediate payment of their bonus. They proclaimed themselves as the Bonus Expeditionary Force, but the public dubbed them as the Bonus Army, raising ramshackle camps at various places around the city. They waited. June 17th was described by the local newspaper as the tensest day in the capital since the war. The Senate was voting on the bill already passed by the House to immediately give the vets their bonus money. By dusk, 1,000 marchers crowded the Capitol grounds, expectantly waiting the outcome. Walter Waters, leader of the Bonus Expeditionary Force, appeared with bad news. The Senate had defended, defeated the bill by, the, by a vote of 62 to 18. The crowd reacted with stunned silence. Sing America and go back to your billets, he commanded, and they did. 
A silent death march began in front of the Capitol and lasted until July 17th when Congress adjourned. The Bonus Army is the popular name of an assemblage of some 43,000 marchers to 17,000 World War I veterans, their families, and affiliated groups who gathered in Washington, D.C. This, this spring and through the summer of 1932 to demand cash payment redemption of their service certificates. By nightfall, the BEF had retreated across the Anacostia River where Hoover ordered MacArthur to stop. Ignoring the command, the general led his infantry to the main camp. By early morning, the 10,000 inhabitants were routed at the camp in flames. Two babies died in nearby hospitals, overwhelmed with casualties. Elson, however, later wrote, The world scene was pitiful. The veterans were raged, ill-fed, and then felt themselves badly abused. To suddenly see the whole encampment going up in a flame just added to the pity. Once known as Boulder Dam, Hoover Dam is a concrete dam in the Black Canyon of the Colorado. Colorado River on the border of Arizona and Nevada. It was constructed from 1931 to 1936, so it is still pretty new. Thousands of workers were involved in the building of it, and over 100 people lost their lives. The dam was controversially named after President Herbert Hoover. It was constructed to help control floods, provide irrigation water, and produce hydroelectric power. The dam is 1,244 feet in length and 726.4 feet high. Recently, there has been much controversy to the naming of the dam after President Hoover because many are saying that he drained our country of our money and spirit. The National Industrial Recovery Act was a legislation enacted in June 1933. This was an act that allowed the president to regulate industry in an attempt to raise prices after severe deflation and stimulate economic recovery. This act was enacted during the Great Depression. The legislation was signed by Franklin Delano Roosevelt on June 16, 1933. The act was implemented by the NRA and the Public Works Administration. Very large numbers of regulation were generated under the authority granted to the NRA by the act, which led to a significant loss of political support for Roosevelt and the New Deal. The NIRA was set to expire in June 1935, but in a major constitutional ruling, the U.S. Supreme Court held Title I of the Act unconstitutional on May 27, 1935. Oh. The Great Depression. This is the longest downturn in economic history. Starting in 1929, after the stock market crash, the Great Depression is causing about 15 million people to be unemployed or broke. People are running out of money, so over half of Americans' banks are failing, consumer spending has dropped, and production rates are slowing down. America soon starts depending on borrowed money. Many people are in debt, and the numbers of foreclosures are increasing heavily. We started a currency exchange, which sent other countries into depression also. President Hoover, which we will interview, assured us that it would be over soon, but was it? No. Matters began to become worse over the course of time, which led over four million Americans looking for work. The numbers of homeless people are rising also because of foreclosures, and now people are going broke too. Now we're on a bumpy road to recovery. The building of dams and hydroelectric power projects have helped with flooding problems and are helping people with paying for electricity. The fireside chats were a series of 30 evening radio addresses given by the United States President Franklin D. Roosevelt between 1933 and 1944. President Franklin D. Roosevelt took office in early 1933. As of now, he is the only president in America history to be elected to four consecutive terms. He is leading the nation through two of the greatest crises in our history, the Great Depression of the 1930s 
and World War II, 1939 to 1945, and he has exponentially expanded the role of the federal government through his New Deal reform program and its legacy. From March 1933 to June 1944, Roosevelt addressed the American people in some 30 speeches broadcast via radio, speaking on a variety of topics from banking to unemployment to fighting, to fighting fascism in Europe. Millions of people found comfort and renewed confidence in these speeches, which became known as the Fireside Chats. By the time Roosevelt took office in early March 1933, the American economy had declined to desperate levels, with the banks in failure, industrial pro production crippled, and more than 13 million people unemployed. In his first inaugural address, Roosevelt sought to impart a new sense of confidence for the struggling nation, declaring that the only thing yeah. we have to fear is fear During itself. his first several months, famously labeled the 100 Days, Roosevelt admi Roosevelt's administration pre presented a broad array of measures to Congress aimed at just ju jump-starting America's, America's in economic recovery. This became the building blocks of the, his recovery, New Deal. One of his earliest actions as president was to declare a bank holiday for a period of, during which all banks would be closed until they were determined to be solvent through federal inspection. Roosevelt, relief was a short-term solution, but economic recovery was his long-term goal. A big part of this plan was the National Industrial Recovery Act, or the NIRA, which was passed in 1933. The NIRA sought to suspend antitrust laws, eliminate unfair competition, and prevent business failures. 